Hi, uh, everyone. Sarah, can you turn that down? Stay there, Bill. Hi, everyone. I'm here. Uh, it didn't, I tried to time it, it didn't work out. Sorry about that. But, uh, the way it goes, I need to work that out. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm here now. Um, sorry about this. I still haven't really worked out how to do the, you know, to set the time. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, it's the way it goes. Can you uh, can you all see me now? Here, that's good. Uh, hi, Richard. Thank you for the super chat donation I saw earlier. Uh, that uh, you uh, donated. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Aaron. Nice to see you. What a shambles. Aaron, Any is anyone having trouble getting Market Watch app to say? Um, don't use that one. Hi, Patrick Niemer, Niemeyer. So let's see what the Bank of England did. Uh, they were expected to raise rates. Uh, they raised uh, by a, a quarter to 0.75. So, uh, and the vote was 9-0, which was unanimous. It was expected to be like 7-2 or 8-1. So that, that could be uh, construed as being a little bit uh, hawkish um, by the Bank of England. Uh, let's see what uh, the markets are doing. Uh, the pound is actually rebounded. Uh, it was down about uh, to around 130.70 just before the decision is now 131. I personally think the pound's going lower. Uh, hi, Calvin from West Palm Beach. When do you see ETF ending and real values in metals actually being? Uh, well, <laughs> I think uh, the only way uh, that that's gonna happen is if people keep buying physical. Uh, not only the retail market, but also wholesale markets and sovereign uh, markets. People need to uh, demand delivery of the physical market. If we keep trading paper gold, they're going to be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep manipulating it for, for a while longer. S. Walker, how can Bank of England afford the interest rate rise on $2 trillion? Well, uh, don't forget, this rate was uh, at a half a percent. Uh, until 2016, and then they cut it to uh, a quarter after the Brexit vote, and now they and now they've raised it twice, and it's really the first time in 10 years that they've raised rates after the uh, crisis. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, what else is there? It'd be interesting as well uh, to listen to what. Uh, because today they have a press conference, and I'll put some of it on here uh, when uh, the uh, governor of the Bank of England starts talking. Uh, yeah, James Scott, I think interest rates should be 6%. I'm looking at a chart here from 2007 uh, from uh, marketoracle.co.uk. At the time, uh, interest rates were above 5%. The CPI was... Uh, around two and a half percent, which is where we're now. <laughs> the RPI is was around four percent, which is where we're now. And rates were at, uh, five, five and a half, almost six percent. So this is not uh, going to end well uh, at all. Um, not going to end well at all. So I agree with you. Uh, what they're doing, Rick uh, Levens. Uh, from Belgium, he likes the live shows, thank you. 
uh, James. Uh, there's quite a few people here now. Good to see everyone. People from uh, Greg from Australia. Yeah, so as I said, uh, they've kept uh, the uh, interest rate almost at zero, while uh, the, the measure of inflation that they use CPI, which is completely bogus, it's around 2.4%. I would say inflation is running more like between 5 and 10% in the UK. So we've almost had 10 years of zero rate. And the reason they're doing this is to keep the banking system uh, from collapsing, uh, you know, to keep their friends in the city of London, you know, uh, trading the derivatives, making millions a year. Uh, but who who pays for that? Well, it's the uh, average person in the UK, uh, the young people, students, everyone. And I'm not being a socialist. I'm just saying that they're manipulating markets. They're disrupting everything. They're disrupt disrupting the housing market, the jobs market. They're disrupting uh, the cleansing of the economy. We need cleansing and liquidation so that uh, investment can pick up and the economy can grow. But they never let that happen, and that's what they're keep they're going to keep doing. The Bank of England is not interested in the uh, health of the UK economy. They're interested in the health of their banks. Uh, and the city of London, Wall Street as well, to some extent. Uh, Tony Yayo uh, saying, why are futures selling this morning? Yeah, uh, the US uh, markets are down quite a bit. Uh, so we're down now 185. I think it's mainly because you know this trade uh, conflict with China seems to be heating up. Uh, Trump is, uh, you know, Trump and the Americas and the Chinese uh, don't seem to have agreed on anything. And we we also failed uh, at a key technical level, 25,400 in the Dow. Let's see if uh, I just wanted to put on something here. I'll put it on a little later on. Uh, we'll have Mark Carney. He's going to be talking at the press conference. And I think these press conferences, be it Mark Carney, Mario Draghi, or uh, Jay Powell, it's all propaganda to keep the markets uh, happy. Uh, and that's all it's about. It's not about the economy and uh, growing the economy. Uh, it's none of that. And I think maybe that's why Trump has been so aggressive with the trade, uh, trade deals, with the tax cuts, because he knows the Fed is not there to ha help Main Street. A video on shadow banking when you got a, a chance. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Uh, David from Detroit, how long can they get away with it? With that? Well, that's always a question that's asked, isn't it? Uh, they'll get a, they'll get away with it until they don't. The, it's very difficult to know when, uh, though. But we need to be aware that. Uh, they won't get away with it. And that's why we need to keep preparing and talking about it. Maneco 64, how do you see Russia's recent dumping of the dollar? Uh, yeah, someone asked that question a few days ago. Uh, I saw Trump, uh, Putin speaking at a press conference last week at the uh, BRICS uh, summit. And he said that he's not getting away from the dollar completely. He's just like the diversifying and he thinks that uh, more and more countries are going to diversify. The yuan is going to be important currency. He said the ruble, he hopes, will be important, the euro. So that's what it's about. Yeah, the Chinese could, uh, if things heat up uh, in the war, trade war with the U.S., the Chinese have that, um, that uh, weapon. It's like a nuclear weapon, I think, if they start selling their treasuries, especially seeing that they've got trillions while... The Russians only had like a couple of hundred billion, I think. Yeah, my yeah, S. Walker says every time you go to the grocery stores, food prices are up with inflation. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my wife uh, noticed yesterday that the price of milk has gone up by more than 10 percent. Butter's gone up, especially here in the UK, and it's going to get worse. But uh, there uh, in they're fooling people, you know, they're boiling uh, the frog at the moment. It's sim It's going to start uh, pretty soon. The frog is going to jump out of the, the pot. They can't get away with it. 
for that much longer, in my opinion. Why are the metals not moving? Well, I would say the metals are doing fairly well today, considering uh, the, the dollar is a bit stronger against the pound and the euro. Uh, yeah, it's been frustrating. I think they're just controlling the metals right now. So uh, I'm not concerned. Uh, we, you just need to be patient, in my opinion. Metals is more an insurance, not speculation, I would say. Yes, that's Walker. He was very careful, uh, Putin, uh, to when he talked about the dollar. And I noticed it was a Bloomberg uh, reporter in Moscow who was asking the question. Rick Levens, uh, 10 year uh, yield. Yeah, it is around 3%. We got up uh, above 3.1%. Uh, we got at, uh, up to 3.01% yesterday. Uh, this morning, it's actually come off a little bit. Uh, it's uh, around 298. At the moment, it seems like they, uh, they've got control of that market, but who knows? The key level to the upside, of course, is here around 3%, but after that is 312, which was the high earlier this year. Lab book 84, I want to buy half an ounce today. I assume that's gold. Um, should I wait uh, to drop more? I'm, I, you know, I don't think so. If you dollar cost average, it doesn't matter if you're able to uh, buy half an ounce once in a while. I don't think you should worry about the price because in the long term, that's going to protect you. Let's have a look, see uh, if uh, what they're saying about. Uh, it's interesting to say what the, uh, you know, the uh, mainstream says about the Bank of England and the. Uh, and the moves. I was listening to earlier some uh, commentators. They were saying that uh, they don't seem to go back and look to the fact that when inflation was two, three uh, percent about ten years ago, interest rates were five or six percent. They don't seem to think that it's a problem that we've had, you know, as much as five percent inflation in the last few years. And it's still around two, three, four percent, and rates are almost at zero. That is bound to uh, create problems. And uh, but uh, they never mentioned that on uh, on the t on Bloomberg TV or anywhere else. Galvin, Calvin Cooper, do you think uh, the government and central banks can totally operate without citizen participation in government central? Bank world authority. Well, I hope it. Uh, I don't think it will work. You know, it never worked in the Soviet Union, centralizing everything. Even though that's what they're uh, gunning or aiming to do. David Rockefeller said that, didn't he? Uh, in I think in 1992 at a press conference to uh, journalists uh, that it's much better to have bankers running everything. Let's hope they uh, fail. Eddie Clifton, at HSBC just sent me this text message. The Bank of England base rate has changed. No need to call us. We'll be in touch soon to let you know if it affects you. There must be worried mortgage holders. Yeah, usually mortgage uh, rates adjust to the Bank of England. So if you haven't fixed your mortgage uh, rates in the UK, it might go up, it might not. It depends on the mortgage uh, deal. Gig, gigs row uh, is right. Uh, precious metals is a way to uh, to maintain and preserve your wealth over the long term. There will be times, though, if gold and silver do spike and get very uh, speculative and get very high, that you can sell some of it and uh, do well from that. Had Gata files paperwork with the SEC to look into China and how controlling precious metals market. I, I, I think Gata is not going to get anything from uh, SEC or the CFTC. Um, they've been uh, manipulating gold forever, the US. So has the UK. Uh, I'm not sure if the Chinese are manipulating it now. 
Yes, Richard McCorkendale says inflation in single digits is a funny idea, if only it was. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, everything, um, I guess they're able to keep the um, charade or charade going because the people working in Wall Street, City of London, politicians, bankers, they uh, they get pay rises and they 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 earn quite a bit, so they don't notice, uh, you know, the the increase in the cost of living. But the general public does, and I think they're, uh, you know, they don't live in the real world. These people, and that's going to come back to bite them. I, I think because things are going to get worse, and they can't keep this forever. Jay Bonds, hi, man, Echo. Thanks for getting back to me. I managed to explain to my friends how the Bank of England is not nationalized. They couldn't believe it. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, we need to uh, abolish uh, these central banks. It, it can only done, uh, be done politically. So people need to know that these institutions are not working in the interest of the public. Central banks are uh, creators of uh, moral hazard. They're socialist for the, there's, it's socialism for the bankers because when they win, they keep the profits. When they lose or go bust, the public saves them. Uh, and, and that's what people need to uh, be aware of, in my opinion. Yeah, 1990s, I mean, interest rates, I think early 90s, mortgage rates were in double digits in the UK. Derek uh, Barwise, surely the elephant in the room is they cannot raise rates meaningfully. Interest rates has become a noose around the central bank. Of course, because they've created so much debt uh, and uh, they've taken on so much uh, toxic assets from the banks. Uh, and these toxic assets have to do with mortgages and housing. So if they raise rates, it's the end for them. Uh, but the flip side of that is that things keeping get, keep getting more expensive because that's what inflation is. With rates like this, you have inflation, which is the creation of money out of thin air. And uh, but they keep lying about these rates. I mean, I was at my uh, golf club the other day talking to people I thought were clever. And one guy who's a former retired banker, he said, oh, uh, unemployment is really low. Everything is great. You know, and I tried to explain to him and he thought I was crazy. So that's how. Uh, how can I say brainwashed people are? Uh, they believe in this spiel, you know, that in inflation is low, that there's no unemployment. Uh, and even if people are working, they're earning like a tenth of what they used to earn. They are doing uh, different jobs at the same time, three jobs instead of one paying well. So it's all uh, heating up. I don't think they can sustain this for, for too much longer uh, here in the UK, nor in the US. I saw an article that uh, more and more people are living in their vehicles or cars or automobiles in the U.S. Daniel Parker, golf courses are a waste of good farmland. Well, I mean, I'm a keen golfer. I think it's nice to have golf courses around. There's not, there's quite a few in the UK, of course. I think during World War II, they used them for, for farming. They needed it. But uh, I like the game. I mean, <laughs> there's stupid people everywhere, not just on golf courses. So, um, yeah. So let's see uh, if we've got... What are they talking here about? Let's effort see. to expand consumption and properly handle trade disputes to the U.S. Does that mean stimulus or what? Like, So I just turned on the uh, Bloomberg, but I, I think I'm not going to waste my time listening to these people. But uh, for those of you who just come on, uh, the Bank of England has raised the uh, interest, the base rates. They call it the base rate in the U.K. from half a percent to three quarters of a percent. 
And it's the first time in almost 10 years that it's been above half a percent. And I've been talking to uh, the viewers that have been here that uh, inflation in the UK or CPI or RPI, retail price index, or it's been running uh, at least at, well, by the government's measures, it's been running between two and 4% in the last few years. And uh, back before 08, when we had the same kind of inflation, the interest rate was around five or six percent. So, and we've even been, you could even argue that these government numbers are, are fudged, of course. Uh, we know that the cost of living is going up by more like five or 10 percent. And we have zero, you know, almost zero percent uh, uh, interest rates. So these rates are not uh, being done to help uh, uh, savers. Uh, it's not being done to help the general economy. It's been helped to keep the zombie banks and their zombie assets that are a lot of them are in the Bank of England. It's 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 being kept there to keep uh, this uh, uh, rotten, corrupt, fraudulent fiat money system going. Why don't uh, any of the politicians stand up for it? Well, because they benefit from it. They benefit from the inflation, and so do the bankers. And that's why more and more people are getting sick and tired of the uh, mainstream mainstream media. They, you know, they buy this stuff that uh, you know inflation is low, that uh, and and that there's no unemployment, and it's the same here in the UK as in the US. So. Yeah, so you might ask, why am I covering the Bank of England? Well, because uh, a lot of times we just say, oh, they raise rates, you know, nothing's going to happen. But we need to uh, get people out there to know that this is not normal. Uh, interest rates should be right now in the UK at least 6%. Uh, yes, it would cause a, a, a collapse of the housing market, collapse of the economy, economy. but like a, a forest fire, it's a good thing to have corrections in the in a free market, a supposedly free market capitalist economy. And uh, they're not letting that happen, and it's going to get worse and worse. It's just going to get, but uh, they can't keep it going forever. If they could, uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe uh, and Weimar Germany would still be the richest countries in the world. Um, and that's why I think uh, their time is uh, running, sh running out soon, in my opinion. Fahad Hussein, will U.S. dollar continue its bear market trend or is rate hikes bullish for U.S. dollar? Uh, well, against what? <laughs> against other fiat currencies? It doesn't really matter. The, the fiat currencies are all sinking together. I think against real things, uh, the dollar and the pound and the euro and the yen, they're going down because they're worthless pieces of paper, in my opinion. But the dollar, yeah, it has, it's still in a downward trend, longer term trend, the dollar index. Uh, it needs, if it's going to go further up, it needs to break above 95.60. I think right now, it, it, like you said, I think uh, there is a, a top in the dollar uh, right now. It could go back down. Richard uh, McCorkendale, the Fed is raising rates to make Trump look bad. Uh, that could be uh, true. It could also be uh, the strategy that uh, they know there's a recession coming and uh, they'll be able to cut rates once the recession starts. Um, who knows? Yeah, luxury items, uh, <laughs> there is deflation for it, but everything that you need to live on, uh, the majority of people need, transport, transportation, uh, food, uh, utilities, electricity, gas, water, uh, tuition, Everything that's worth, uh, you know, that you need to serve is going up uh, it, <laughs> and the pound's going down. Um, so let's see what the pound's doing here right now. Yes, the pound's recovered a little bit, but it's still below 131. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we were uh, at 143. So that's even more inflationary, the debasement of the currency that's going to continue. 
Mamaji Bapu, good afternoon. Thanks for all the content. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Giggs wrote, Yuli, in your 20s or 30s, holding physical silver is your old age pension. You're, yeah. Well, it's a good thing to accumulate gold and silver. I, I didn't start in my 20s and 30s. It's more like in the late, my late 30s. Uh, I was a more mid 30s. I started buying gold and silver. I wish I would have done it earlier. Uh, is the market going to crash soon? One of the viewers is asking. Uh, I don't know. I mean, today we're down. Uh, the Dow's down 160 right now. It was down a bit more earlier. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But uh, it's definitely been going sideways since the big uh, drop we saw in the beginning of the year. Aesop's hair. Hi, Mario. Thanks for the live stream. How do you think uh, UK rates will rise before it will be necessary to cut them again. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to raise them that much more. Uh, yeah, especially with what's going on politically, uh, you know, with Brexit. Um, I think they're going to wait till next year now. Um, maybe next year they'll raise it to 1%. Uh, and that will be uh, all she wrote, in my opinion. Chris Webers, uh, what do you think of the Fed not raising right now? Well, they didn't raise yesterday because it was not uh, a meeting where they raise rates. They will raise again um, in September, so and they will raise again in December. So it was a non-event, the meeting, the la this last meeting by the Fed. Doesn't mean anything that didn't they didn't raise it. Uh, old world, old world order. Uh, no, the increase was of uh, 25 basis points from half a percent to 0.75 percent. Uh, mortgage rates, I don't know where they are right now, probably three, four percent, because I don't have a mortgage anymore. But uh, so if you have a four percent mortgage and it's variable, it might go up to four and a quarter. Uh, yeah, I think they're setting uh, the UK economy up for huge, uh, you know, collapse. What they're doing is going to, like, hurt. There will be consequences. You can't keep printing money like this for 10 years with no consequences. And we already seen the consequ consequences. Uh, we're seeing uh, moribunds, business conditions, because uh, you, uh, you need savings for investment. Correct. That's the old rule. Uh, and if in interest rates are negative or zero or real interest rates, real interest rates in the UK are really negative. Because if you take inflation at 5% and interest rate at uh, less than one, it's a negative interest rate in real terms. Who's going to invest? Who's going to save and invest? What all people are doing are borrowing and, and spending. It's going to, it's Paul hollowing out the UK economy, it's a crime in my opinion. That's why people need to understand this. They they need to uh, watch more of my stuff and more of the other alternative uh, economic uh, channels because they won't, uh, they don't, uh, they won't hear about this in the mainstream or from the city of London and the, uh, and the government. Yeah, I mean, uh, First class uh, stamp, I remember when it used to be 26p. I think now it's almost like 80p. I'm not sure. I haven't used one in a while. But that's, yeah, it's all really ridiculous. Uh, Shane uh, Sturridge says rates should be at 4 or 5%. I would argue they should be even 6 you know. Uh, I was looking at a chart here from... Uh, MarketOracle.co.uk, and before the crisis in 08, uh, the CPI was running at the same level it's running now, around two and a half, three percent, and the uh, base rate was five and a half, almost six percent. So yeah, it's completely uh, uh, 
how can I say, irresponsible monetary policy. It's uh, Havensteinish. <laughs> Havenstein was the head of the Reichsbank during the Weimar uh, hyperinflation. He's the guy who printed all the money. And we're doing the same thing as Havenstein. Danny Djokovic, uh, Peter Schiff, uh, prepaid debit card using gold. Uh, I don't think people should get into that. I do have a glint card where I have very little bit of gold in it. I don't spend it. I think gold and silver should be used to as insurance for saving. Uh, yeah, if, if the price does explode eventually, yeah, then you sell some. But you shouldn't really use your gold to uh, spend money. Uh, follow uh, Gresham's law, you know, use the bad money to spend and save the good money, I would say. Rick Levens, is taking a mortgage in Belgium at this moment very stupid to do? Is there a chance that banks revaluate the rates in the crash? Well, my first rule of thumb about mortgages anywhere, be it in Belgium or here in the UK, is do you really need a mortgage? If not, yeah, don't be a borrower. But if you think you can afford it and you can maybe get a fixed mortgage, who knows? But uh, bankers, they can always change the rules. <laughs> you know, if there's a, a, a financial calamity, uh, they're going to screw uh, you. Uh, slit, slit throny, slit throny. Uh, with the better expected votes and rate hike, do you expect uh, this to lift the pound? It has already. You know the markets react instantaneously. So yeah, the vote was uh, it was unanimous to raise rates. The pound was down about uh, fifty uh, pips. Now it's down about thirty. So it did rebound, and it's actually coming back down right now. So yeah. But I don't think it means much. Uh, I think it's all propaganda. Uh, monetary policy is still highly uh, irresponsible, highly accommodative, and uh, it's going to end in tears. Periphery Pete, I don't know anyone who can buy a house without a mortgage, and they can barely afford the mortgage they have. If mortgages go up, they're homeless. Uh, yeah, I guess young people and some people who have been irresponsible can't do that. I mean, if you've uh, had a mortgage for a long time and been paying it off and the house values have gone up, you can always sell your house, uh, pay off the mortgage and buy a smaller house. That's a way to get out of uh, your debt. But of course, yeah, you need to, to, to find a, it's easier said than done and it takes a while. Water shambles, bought my house in cash, 10 years of saving and sacrifices. Well done. It's doable. It is doable. That's what they want people to think, uh, that you need to get a mortgage. And that's why, you know, they, the system keeps going. But if people went on strike, maybe rent and save or try to live. I know they people have a go at people living with their parents, but what's... You know, it's better to do that and save and then buy a place than not. You got to start somewhere. Rene Colope, hi from Brissy, Queensland, watching the housing bubble, unfortunately, here. Thanks for your work. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I've read a few articles or headlines about the housing in Australia. It's getting a little bit wobbly, but uh, we'll see. I I I'll have to look into it a little more. Chris Weber's, I'm selling my house now and renting. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, what I did three years ago, what we did, my wife and I, we sold our old house, paid off the mortgage and bought a smaller house. So we don't have uh, a mortgage. We didn't have a very big mortgage in the first place. 
I guess we were fortunate. We got into the housing uh, market, bought a house in 1996, 97. Prices were still quite affordable back then. And I wasn't thinking, you know, uh, I was just thinking of buying a house to live in, not as a speculation. Rent in some cases is more than a mortgage would cost. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it, it might cost more than a mortgage, but you don't have this liability, uh, you know, on your balance sheet of, you know, 200,000 or 500,000 pounds. Uh, why when you're renting, you, you're just paying, you know, the, the rent. So that's the way to look at it, in my opinion. Let's see uh, over here. Uh, yeah, there's still. Let's see what the markets are doing. So the Dow is down 165. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the gold market hasn't really moved too much. It has come off the highs, but it's pretty much unchanged from last night. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. That Chris Weber's housing in the Netherlands is crazy. My neighbor bought uh, a house in 2014 for 161,000 euros. Today she can sell it for 269. Yeah, but I guess she needs to find a, a place. Uh, it, everywhere else has gone up. So it's more like a, unless you sell it, you haven't made any money. That's the other thing about the housing market. A lot of people uh, will buy a house. You know, let's say for a hundred thousand, and, and now it's valued at two hundred, and they say, "Oh, I've made a hundred thousand uh, euros," but they haven't, unless you sell it and take the profit. You haven't made any money. Nico Mengual, do you think the housing market is a bubble worldwide? Yes, especially in the West, because the central banks. Uh, that was the uh, purpose of QE to reinflate the housing market, uh, and uh, and they've done it, but uh, it will burst again. Robert Cowan, rent is a mortgage payment without with no return. Uh, it is when the housing market is going up, but when there's a collapse, you wish you be you were renting, right? Uh, so it works both ways. Funking. We need sound money, not the monopoly money we can just create out of thin air. Yeah, I have an example. Uh, Switzerland, for example, until uh, the Americans and the financial elites made the Swiss uh, get rid of half their gold reserves, Switzerland uh, had you know, uh, the soundest currency in the world until probably the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, the property real estate market in Switzerland was... Uh, you know, properties were expensive, but they they hadn't changed much for like uh, 30, 40 years because the currency was so stable uh, that actually property prices didn't go up that much uh, in real terms. They went up in dollar terms because the Swiss franc went up. So, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a false uh, prosperity, uh, this inflation. Everyone seems to think that inflation is a good thing that house prices should go up. But housing is a, a, a living necessity. Uh, investment is something else. Housing is not an investment, right? So it's a shame. Hopefully these, this will change and we will go back to sound money. Yeah, education is to blame. That's right. Aesop's hair, UK property market is a golden goose. Yeah, it is at the moment. <laughs> it is, but it can turn very quickly. Uh, and I've benefited from it, uh, I'll be honest, because I wouldn't have been able to uh, do what I've done in the last few years if they hadn't uh, kept uh, 
you know, things artificially high with low, uh, well, to, with negative interest rates. We have negative real interest rates in the UK because the uh, base rate is uh, three quarters of a percent and inflation is more like five or 10 percent. Even if you take the government numbers of two and a half to three percent, it's negative. What is the best beginner book on economics? Well, go to the Mises uh, website, Mises.org, and look at the Austrian School um, of Economics. I recommend that. There's loads of books there. Uh, von Mises, Rothbard, uh, Hayek. That's what I. That's where I would uh, go to. Not the Keynesian. So uh, let's have a look. Yeah, gold uh, unchanged, 1216. Uh, the, the Dow is down 170 right now. And the pound uh, is still down, is just around 131. We were at 13070 before the Bank of England raised rates. The reason it's rebounded a bit, it's usually because it's, uh, you know, sell the rumor by, by the fact kind of thing. And also uh, the vote was unanimous to raise rates. Uh, I think the market was expecting an eight to one vote in favor of raising. So. It's it's sure does. Word, I like, say we're big enough to we got Yeah. So let's see, uh, what's the 10 year yield doing right now? Oh, the 10 year yield is down three basis points. So it, it got up above 3% yesterday, it's now at 298. Nico Mengual, uh, what is the best investment for people who have considerable savings? The banks, bank rates are bad, the market is dangerous if you don't know enough not to have to learn. Well, yeah, besides being rates being really low by the banks, uh, when you put your money in the bank, it's not your money anymore. It's an unsecured loan to the bank. Uh, well, I recommend precious metals, Nico. That's what I do a lot, gold and silver. Uh, I mean, uh, housing. That will always hold its value generationally, but you need to think about uh, the taxes, the upkeep, uh, whether you can rent it, uh, all those things. Uh, the pillow uh, is the flag of uh, the old kingdom of Wessex. It's not the Welsh dragon, but it looks like the Welsh dragon. And uh, also, just to let you guys know, uh, I've uh, I do have now this uh, Moneco 64 store. And uh, and uh, you can buy the same uh, pillows or cushions that I have there. So uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll give you the link right now to this store. Uh, the, the, links, uh, the link to the store as well is always on the description of my videos. So uh, here's the link. And I've also uh, designed some uh, Billy Silverbug mugs. I've designed some End of Fed uh, mugs as well. So yeah, if you're interested in those uh, cushions, uh, they're exactly the same. I designed it and I put them on in the shop. Hey, Dixon, Mario, uh, what do you think of Karen Huda's Global Wealth Lawyer? I've listened to that woman before. She says she's uh, involved with IMF or World Bank. I'm not too sure what to think of her. Uh, you know, uh, when people come out like that, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I haven't, I listened to her uh, a few years ago, but I haven't heard from her since. A lot of, you know, she seems to be one of those people, insiders, was trying to say that everything's going to be fine and that you should trust, you know, the people who made this possible, you know, the IMF and all the crooks. And I don't agree with that. I think we need a complete revamping of the system. We need, uh, yeah, we need to see the disappearance of central banks 
in these big uh, institutions like the BIS, uh, IMF. We don't need that. These are all instruments of the globalists. And the only way we're going to get rid of this, these institutions, is through educating people, through talking about it like we're doing right now. Uh, it's going to take a while, but uh, it's that's the only way. Anthony Ulfig, love watching your reports, watching from Florida. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Uh, do you know Professor Antal Fichetti? Yeah, I, I have read a lot of his stuff for many years. Uh, he's good, Antal Fichetti. He, he talks about how actually uh, low interest rates actually hurt uh, the economy. And I agree with him. And he's a gold bug as well. He talks about how uh, World War One uh, destroyed the gold uh, the, the gold system that we had that worked really well for trade, and how it created all the uncertainty and all the uh, business cycles as well. So yeah, uh, I think it's Gold University his uh, website. I guess you just need to Google Antal Fichetti. I recommend it. Uh, Michael Paiso, is a non-performing loan better or worse than no loan at all? Uh, well, I guess a non-performing loan could become performing again. That's the only uh, reason why it could be better than no loan. Stephen Warren, Bank of England raised rates 9 nil. Uh, then pound drops by the rumor so that well the pound actually uh, spiked higher on that vote uh, the market was expecting eight one or seven two and it went from one thirty uh, seventy to one thirty one thirty uh, so the pound rebounded on the back of that but now is coming uh, back down wow we're making new lows uh, that's what I expected to happen and the Bank of England is also bashing gold. Uh, because they can't, you know, even though gold is only down $2, two uh, you can almost always see that when the pound drops a lot, the Bank of England comes in and sells the dollar, uh, the gold against the dollar. Uh, but uh, I'm not surprised uh, with the pound going uh, lower like this. Uh, I think we're going to go a lot lower. This has just happened in the last few minutes. It must have been a comment. Uh, by uh, Mark Carney. I don't know if he started his uh, press conference yet. I'm not going to waste my time listening to it right now because I'm talking to you guys. I might talk about it later. But as I said before, all these central bankers' comments, press conferences, is pure propaganda uh, to keep the system going, to keep the markets uh, functioning for the, the bankers and uh, the financial system. It's not to... Uh, you know, improve the public's uh, a lot, so to speak. How much is silver actually worth in pounds? Well, it's right now it's just above uh, around 11. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it. You just need to take the price of silver and divide it by 1.3. Karen Hudders is now pushing for communities to create local currencies. <laughs> Hasn't she seen cryptocurrencies? I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's not local, but it's, uh, you know, it's local, but international. She's uh, behind the curve, uh, Karen Hudders or Hudders. Rick W. Mortgage comes from, uh, yeah, it's a death contract, a death gauge, isn't it? It's a death contract. I think the Normans brought it over. So uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, the pound is now down uh, near the lows, 130.39. Gold is uh, near the lows as well. It, it, it's, it, it's like clockwork. If the pound gets hit hard, 
you know, the bankers come in and hit uh, hit gold. Silver is actually unchanged. It's at 1540, but gold is at 1213, down two and a half right now. Uh, it's just very blatant. Uh, the Bank of England does say on their website that they uh, do operate in the gold market. Andrew Skelton, Afternoon Maneco, yes, loving the Anglo-Saxon cushion, the real enzyme of England. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking if it's the Welsh dragon, and I told them it's not. It's the um, Kingdom of Wessex, uh, the flag of Wyvern. And uh, Andrew, you can also uh, get that now, if, if that cushion, on the uh, Maneco 64 store. Some people asked if I was going to do the cushions. So there you go. Uh, if you want one, if you if you like one of those cushions, it's there, and all the other stuff as well. Billy mugs and and the Fed mugs. Uh, Mr. Goldman Sachs is talking at the moment. Yeah, that's right. The Bristol pound is a good example of how local cryptocurrency could work. Yeah, the the problem with the local currencies is that. Uh, it's difficult to get businesses to accept it because businesses have to pay taxes to the Bank of England, to the government, and they need to earn in pounds. So they're always going to have a foreign exchange risk, right? So what we need is for a complete uh, cleansing <laughs> of this system. Hi, Helen. Nice to see you here. So, uh, yeah, I've been covering... Uh, the Bank of England decision. Uh, just to recap, my main uh, take from this is that they're continuing to uh, debase the currency. Yes, they've raised rates, but uh, 12 years ago or 11 years ago before the crisis, when the CPI or RPI were at the same levels there now, the interest rate was around five and a half to six percent. So with the rate still below one percent, this is not a hawkish move by the Bank of England. Uh, it's just another move to keep uh, the speculation and their fraudulent fiat money system going. It's going to keep hurting uh, the general public, young people. It's going to keep hurting savers, the economy. Uh, so what do you do? You get rid of the pounds, the paper. And, of course, they always come in and... Uh, uh, Bang, you know, bash gold, but gold is gonna gold is gonna survive. The pound will not survive. Uh, gold has survived for the last few thousand years. Uh, the pound will be around maybe in two five years time, but it will be worth a lot less. That's what you need to. Uh, the only thing you need to know, really. Yeah, it's a monopoly game, and uh, we're not part of the game. The people in charge of the game, in charge of the game, who can't change the rules, are the guys at Goldman Sachs, the politicians, and they they scratch each other's back, right? So that's why people need to learn this because they need to get rid of uh, these politicians by electing or maybe running, because uh, it's the only way, uh, or just getting out of the system themselves, trying to. Uh, avoid dealing with the, the bankers and how do you do that? Well, try to live a different kind of life. Try not to uh, borrow so much. Try, you know, I don't know, instead of taking three holidays a year, take one and pay for it, uh, cash, things like that. Um, of course, <laughs> it's difficult, I guess, to convince uh, the public. Uh, Stephen R., what about creating a book list for your recommendations on Goodreads? I would love to see that list. Uh, well, I, I did a book stream, I called it, uh, in June, and I, I had a list there of all the 17 books that I, I gave. So you can go onto my uh, YouTube channel and have a look, uh, search uh, for book stream, live stream, and, and I talked about all the books there. I haven't heard of Goodreads, uh, but uh, I'm, you know, I, I've already ha publicized it. So, Andrew Skelton, as some one said above, do some research on the com commercial sh sheetar to learn where mortgages come from. Helen Go, Mary, do you think Deutsche Bank will 
get out of Singapore, had lunch with my Deutsche Bank friends yesterday. Their management told them to be prepared. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, no, I mean, they. that's what, uh, if they're in trouble, they're, you know, they uh, will probably start at the periphery, uh, cutting, cutting down. Uh, Daryl Lowry, uh, in the U.S., a 6%. I think you mean Fed funds rate. The discount rate is the rate at which banks lend to each other overnight. But, yeah, anyway, a 6% rate would be uh, that service of uh, – <laughs> One point is that one point two trillion? Uh, yeah, and, and the thing with with rates rising, the debt will rise. It's like a snowball. Andrew Skelton gives good advice: <laughs> never be a borrower or a lender. Right? I agree. Rick W. Mario, have you ever thought about writing a book? Maybe. Uh, not really. Some people have asked me that. Maybe I should. Uh, maybe something about uh, monetary history of the 20th century or something to do with banking and wars. Maybe I should uh, think about that. Maybe you guys have, uh, I don't know, a uh, suggestion for, top for topics. Well, yeah, gold got down to 1213 and now it's rebounded back to 1214.30. Uh, I think it's been related to the move in the pound. The pound dropped quite sharply, almost to 130. It's now 130.40. So it's down uh, two thirds of a percent. Uh, gold is down 0.1 of a percent. So gold is actually up in pounds. Uh, Stephen Warren Carney policy needs to walk, not run. Yeah, he, and that's more accommodation. Uh, uh, Mark Carney knows that if he raises rates uh, to where they should be, uh, he's going to implode everything. He's going to his his friends in the city of London are going to be uh, ruined. <laughs> so he needs to keep it going. Superior seven. No, I don't think gold will go to a thousand dollars, or it could. You know, if everything collapses. If the Dow collapses to 5,000 and gold goes to 1,000, that's still pretty good. But no, I, I don't think uh, it will go. It might uh, go a little. I, I said that if we break 1212, 12, we could go to 1170, which is the next Fibonacci level. But I don't think we're going to 1,000. I think uh, I've been victim of it I, for many years, you know, looking at the fiat price of gold. And it makes you like uh, frustrated, but uh, and, and it's hard. But I think we, we should still just look at golds as grams or ounces and say, you know, let's say I have 50 ounces of gold and uh, in, in 10 years time I have 60, so I've got more money, right? So to think of uh, gold and silver and fiat prices, yeah, we need to do it because the, in the real world we'll still have to use the fiat. but. Uh, it's hard, uh, but what I what I uh, tell myself when gold is uh, manipulated lower, when things are bearish for the gold price, is would what would I rather do? Keep my gold, or uh, exchange it for fiat and put it with the bankers, where it's going to be completely unsafe. Uh, that's that's the way to look at it, in my opinion. Periphery, Pete. Yes, that would be a good history. Would be interesting. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I've never written a book. I've written research papers, but uh, so uh, yeah, it's just been an hour since I've been doing the live stream. Uh, I'm gonna just let's see where the markets are. Yeah, uh, that uh, yeah, markets are still. Uh, Pretty uh, weak. The Dow is down 173. The future S&P is down 17. NASDAQ is down 60. The pound is almost near the lows, down uh, 90 pips. So uh, I'll take a, a few more questions, and then I'm going to call it a, a day uh, here, guys.
you don't mind. Uh, Andrew Skelton says, I still have my Anglo-Saxon silver pennies stored in the in the Rio bank made of earth. <laughs> That's good, uh, Andrew. Uh, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys know the history of the name uh, bank. Well, it, it means it comes from Banco in Italy, which is a bench. And in the Renaissance, uh, the, the money changers used to sit on a bench. And, uh, and that's where they kept their gold coins and silver coins. And uh, if, a, if someone came to uh, get their uh, money and they couldn't, uh, the bankers couldn't pay them, uh, their bench would be broken and they couldn't use it anymore. And that's where the word uh, bankrupt comes from. Uh, and that's where the word, word bank comes from. But nowadays it's completely different. <laughs> a bank is not really what it used to be. Cable to parity. I think it will, Alan, eventually. Uh, it will take a while. You know, the Bank of England and this, the UK, uh, yeah, they could lose control. Uh, if it's going to happen, I think it could be if we could have a sterling crisis, not that we're not having one uh, right now, <laughs> because we've come from $2.10 in 2007 to $1.30 right now. And Brexit accelerated it, but it's not the cause of it. But usually these crises happen in September when people come back from the holidays. So, uh, yeah, we, we could see uh, some kind of crisis uh, in the pound in the ne next month. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up. We've had quite a few people here. It's interesting talking about the Bank of England. Uh, don't be uh, fooled by uh, this action. Uh, the Bank of England is not uh, hawkish. They're not uh, making monetary conditions harder. Uh, they're going to keep inflating things away. The pound's going to keep going down. Uh, and, uh, that's, uh, and that's it. Everything that Carney says is all uh, propaganda to keep uh, you know, the system going, uh, to keep the city of London going and the 1% uh, 